Hey Becky, well there are scenes of panic and pandemonium at Kabul airport today as desperate people pour onto the runway trying to flee the country in what can only be described as a chaotic exodus. Now, people are literally clinging on to US military aircrafts as they try to take off. The US is in charge of the airport there, but their focus is on the evacuation of American personnel. As far as commercial flights go, it's a disorderly mess with little security uh, and the commercial flights are currently not running. Uh, we know that as of last night, the US military had flown around 500 embassy personnel out of the country on military aircraft. They're working uh, up to a capacity of several thousand out per day, but they won't have that capability for a few days to come. As for the Afghans that have worked in various roles for the US, it's going to be a much tougher journey to get out of the country. As I mentioned, com commercial flights are problematic. Thousands of Afghans are stranded at the airport with their suitcases and whatever other belongings they could muster together. Um, and just getting to the airport, Becky, uh, from far-flung locations in Afghanistan means having to run a very dangerous gauntlet that could cost them their lives. There are also reports that NBC News can't confirm that five people have been killed at the airport. It's unclear under what circumstances. Could have been gunfire. It could have been a stampede. But it's so chaotic there. Uh, the details are only dripping out uh, as the day unfolds. Ali, we, we have watched that video of, of the Afghan citizens kind of surrounding the, the military transport plane and, and trying to grasp onto the sides of that. We've watched that again and again um, this morning. And I just wonder what happened. Do you know what the end result was? I mean, the plane can't take off like this. Did they pull it aside? No, uh, one of the planes actually took off and there was also some very disturbing uh, video that's emerged of people uh, falling out of the, the, the wheel hub of the airplane after it had taken off. But most of the planes were grounded because they simply couldn't take off because there was a stampede of people on the runway, literally, as the video showed, clinging onto the plane. So a lot of them had to be grounded and then the U.S. Army then had to uh, form a perimeter around the runway to stop people coming, uh, pouring onto the runway, and they had to fire warning shots in the air to disperse people. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a real mess there, and you can see that the Afghan people, who are obviously not supporters of the Taliban, are desperate to find a way out of that country, even resorting to clinging on to wheels of airplanes. You mentioned how dangerous it is even to try and and, and make the run to get out. And I guess that if you look like you are trying to get away, then obviously you're not a supporter and that puts you at incredible risk. Uh, exactly. And, and you see, one of the problems there, Becky, is that the U.S. had said to uh, Afghans that had been helping U.S. personnel uh, and had granted them visas, they said, look, come down to Kabul airport and we'll evacuate you. The problem with that is a lot of these Afghans were in far-flung parts of the country. It's a vast country. They didn't have any money uh, two weeks ago to get a commercial flight from some corner of the country to Kabul to get evacuated. And they just simply couldn't go by roads with their families because it was too dangerous. If the Taliban caught them, at best they would be detained and at worst they would be killed. So it was this really dangerous gauntlet that they had to run uh, through the country, which many of them were unable to do and are now in hiding, uh, totally unaware of what the future holds for them uh, as the Taliban has now totally overrun the country. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We planned for every contingency, but I always promised the American people that I will be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. American troops cannot and should not 
be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. Desperate to flee Taliban rule, Afghans are resorting to this, grasping at U.S. military aircraft and risking their lives. Some hung onto the wheels and fell to their death. Those left behind could only watch in horror. The chaos at Kabul's airport, a sign of the distress over what's ahead. With Afghanistan's land borders under Taliban control, thousands crowded onto the tarmac. No visible security or any semblance of order. We are here because we're jobless, this man says. We left our homes. We have no food. They scaled the walls around the airport and jumped over barbed wire. Satellite images showed the size of the crowd outside just waiting and the traffic gridlock. So many rushed to the airport to find only disappointment and frustration. It's a very, very bad situation and people is in uh, chaos. Western nations, including Canada, scrambled to organize evacuations as British citizens and embassy staff were among the lucky few getting out. U.S. forces used helicopters to clear the runway, with Afghans recording what they saw. The helicopter is uh, flying very down on the ground, trying to scatter people, to scare and scatter people. The Americans temporarily shut down all flights in an effort to regain control. They struggled, though, with 6,000 American troops being sent to the airport. They opened fire and killed some they considered threats. A general should have understood what it meant to leave an evacuation point in the heart of, of the largest city in Afghanistan. This wasn't a decision. This was a mistake. Just outside the airport, here's what the people are fleeing. Taliban militants back in control and showing it with firepower. Most Afghans can't leave. Facing an uncertain future, their country now can't escape. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Toronto.